Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. Today's another AMA episode, that is, Ask Me Anything. I love to answer your questions, and if you have a question you think is going to be a broad interest, send it in. I'll answer it live on the air. Send your questions to victor at victorjm.com. That's victor at victorjm.com. Today's question comes from Severio in Philadelphia. He says, I'm looking for feedback on entering the self-storage investment niche. I'm interested in exploring the option of divesting my interest in residential real estate and entering into an investment where tenants don't sleep. Any feedback or guidance would be helpful. Well, Severio, this is a great question. It's also a very general question. Real estate is hyper-local. That means the same asset type could perform well in one location and terribly in another. It comes down to meeting the laws of supply and demand. The yields are good in self-storage on a per-square-foot basis. And like often is said, storage is like apartment investing. You get all of the tenants' belongings, their furniture, and their boxes, but because there's no tenants and toilets to mess with, you don't have to worry about evicting them if they don't pay the rent. Your remedies are much more robust, even in tenant-friendly jurisdictions. The problem is that storage has attracted a lot of investment. Some new players have entered the market with a lot of REIT money behind them with very high-quality, climate-controlled product in multi-level buildings that rent at high rental rates. They combine the storage business with a retail storefront that sells everything storage-related. They sell boxes and tape. They sell protective garment bags and solutions for lawyers and accountants that need long-term file storage. They have secure on-site document shredding service for all those documents that are now obsolete and can be destroyed. They have clear, transparent plastic bins for sale so you can see the contents inside a box. And they've got large, flat boxes on wheels you can slide under a bed. They often include a moving truck rental service on site with all the tools like moving blankets that are needed for a move. All of the imaginable revenue streams that you could add have been thought of. In these markets, you'll often find the market saturated. There's too many players and some of the older facilities have high vacancy. Alternatively, these older facilities are renting at a discount to the market in order to stay full. At that point, you're either the market leader, getting the majority of the profit, or you're the discount player, barely making money. So I'm a fan of finding an underserviced segment of the market and then pursuing that area. For example, many cities have a shortage of commercial storage for businesses. We're talking about places where businesses can hold excess inventory. Sometimes it's a car dealership, needing secure facilities where they can store their inventory. Maybe it's a furniture store. With the shrinking footprint of real estate, some businesses need facilities for their inventory. So instead of 100 square feet, the business might be looking for 1,000 or 3,000 square feet. It's a very different type of storage business than a pure place self-storage business. I know several antique dealers that are regularly looking for places to store excess inventory. We find that many markets have a surplus of residential self-storage, but an acute shortage of boat and RV storage. You really want to do a survey of your local market and compare the supply and demand. Some areas calculate the demand just using a formula based on the number of residents in the area. It's not that simple in my view. Some parts of town have large homes on large lots with large attached garages. Those people are not great customers for self-storage. Other parts of town have small apartments. People don't have space to store seasonal items. They need space for their winter toys like skis and snowshoes all the winter ski helmets, and all the holiday season decorations. They also need a place to store their summer toys like kayaks and paddle boards and bikes. You see, demand is also a function of the types of properties in the area. In the most expensive parts of town, apartment rentals can be expensive. It's cheaper to rent a small storage unit than requiring a larger apartment. It's not as simple as dividing the population by the number of storage units in an area to determine if the market's saturated. People don't want to drive too far to get to their belongings, so the radius from home matters. People want their belongings no more than about a 10-minute drive from home. The design of the storage facility itself is also critical. Small facilities often have overheads that are too high. The cost of staff is too high on a per-unit basis or on a per-square-foot basis. You might find an old mom-and-pop storage facility that's underperforming the market. It could be purchased at a good price. It could also be turned around. Some of these facilities were not properly marketed. Some did not maximize their potential for multiple streams of income. And some facilities could be made more efficient if there was, say, a centralized call center taking client inquiries. This would enable you to reduce the number of hours that the facility needs to be staffed with real live bodies. Some facilities have the potential to create enormous value with relatively simple changes. But on the other hand, if you have a brand new shiny competitor across the street 
with tons of services that you'll never compete with, you want to take a much closer look at the local market conditions to determine whether that supply is saturated. Self-storage is a segment that requires a lot of domain expertise. It's not something to jump into blindly without hiring some experts as a consultant. I believe there's a number of remaining opportunities in the self-storage space, but the market is getting saturated in a lot of the metro areas. You've got to be extremely careful. I want to thank you so very for a great question. And for the listeners at home, definitely look for those underserviced segments in the market. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.